So let's get you started building your first emails now. Hey everybody, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a quick overview and building an email from scratch, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go into every single stack and look at every single setting, okay? Look for more detailed reviews and videos on you know each individual stack and how everything is more in depth, okay? Right now, we just wanna get you started. We wanna quickly show you how to build one of the demo emails that is inside uh, the demo project that ships with the product. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into Rapuver right now, review this email, and then we're gonna build it from scratch. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Okay, so here we are in Rapidweaver, and this is the demo project that ships with the email products, okay? And here we are going to build the inset heading demo right now. And the reason I chose this one is, it's not the simplest example here, but it's also not maybe the most complex, okay? But on top of it, this inset header, where we see this white box that kind of overlays on top of the purple header, okay, is really tough to do by hand. Uh, but it is really simple to do using the email stacks. So first, what we're gonna do here is we're going to review kind of what the layout here is inside RapidWeaver's edit mode, okay? So we can kind of get a feel of how things are laid out. And then we're gonna jump in and build this completely from scratch, okay? So first off, inside the stacks library, you'll notice all of these stacks that ship with the email product. Okay, we have, and it's split into two different groups. At the top here, we have kind of content-based stacks, which is buttons and headers and things that go in the content area of your email, okay? Next is gonna be layout, sort of layout stacks, okay? Where we have columns, the email style stack, callouts, spacers, dividers, um, a wrapper, and visibility to control whether or not something is visible on desktop or mobile, okay? So if we quickly jump into the main area here, we'll see that we have the email style stack right at the top. And this controls all the kind of global styles throughout our entire email. This has text color, text sizing, uh, button and element colors, things of that nature, the size of the email, okay, so the width of the email. Um, very important stack, we need this to have this once at the top of every single email, okay? Further down, you'll see it's really simple. I wanted a two column, and then I added an image and some text. Further down, I have a little wrapper that gives me an outer column color, okay, and then a body color. And then I have another wrapper that is uses the default coloring defined in, in the email style stack, and then the rest of my content. So I have some images, a header, some text, a button, a call out, which is kind of a colored box to give it some accent. And then below this uh, wrapper, I have my list of links that you know link to all my various social accounts. And then I have some footer information with copyright information and some thank you and probably some unsubscribed links and all that kind of jazz, okay? So you kind of see how this email is built out using some stacks. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna now jump into a blank project and build it from scratch. So here we are inside RapidWeaver, and there's a few things that we need to actually do before we can start building out our email, okay? First, we need to go into the themes and make sure that our project is set to be the email theme, okay? So now that we've done that, that's simple, okay? Let's go ahead and add the style stack to the page. This is gonna be the very first stack that we add to the page, okay? And let's go ahead and click on the settings and open those up, okay? And what we'll notice here is inside the email style stack, we have an implementation checklist. This is a little checklist that as you see here, we have a little warning saying you have not completed the implementation checklist. So in order for us to get that alert away, we need to actually make sure that we complete this email implementation checklist. So we've already set the email theme, so check, we've gotten that done. Okay, disable advanced general settings. So let's go ahead and go into general uh, inside RapidWeaver. We're gonna scroll down and go down to advanced. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncheck each and every single one of these. Okay, and click done. Okay, let's go back. Okay, good, we've done that. Okay, set the title to my email subject. Okay, there's multiple places you can do this. Inside general, you can set the title right here or inside the page specific 
page inspector settings, we can go ahead and set the browser title to getting started. Okay, now I know it's also gonna ask me to change the slogan, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say getting started with email for Rapid Weaver, okay? Now, more in-depth information about what slogan is and further emails, but essentially it's gonna be um, some a short description of what your email is. It gives us a little bit of help in some things like Gmail and some other email apps. So we've set the title to the subject. We've set the slogan to my description. Okay, now we need to set the web address. Now this really only needs to be done if we're gonna be publishing this email online or using we wanna use the drag and drop image support. And here is an important checkbox. Make sure that we only use email stacks. You cannot use any stack that you want when you're building your email. You can only use the stacks that have been provided for you here with the email product. Okay, so with the implementation checklist done, we notice that our warning is gone. We are now good to go and ready to start building our email, okay? I'm gonna leave most of these as the default. Um, I know that I wanted my header colors to be purple, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the purple color uh, that we wanted for headers, okay? Great. Now, if you remember, first at the very top, we had a two column stack, okay? And we had inside there, we had an image, okay? And then we had some um, header, okay? This text was right aligned. Uh, this column uh, was that purple color. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the background color of this to be purple, okay? Now we also wanna set this uh, text actually be from the default scheme to the alternate scheme because inside site styles, you can set text color and alternate text color. So here we are gonna be using the alternate text color. Then inside the image, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use a warehouse image because I already have this image uploaded online. So I'm gonna paste in the URL to my image, okay? Then I can go ahead and set the dimensions of that image so that it scales properly, okay? And there we go. I have my nice two column layout there. Now let's go ahead and create that inset header directly below it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a wrapper, okay? And what the wrapper does is it kind of gives us a wrapper on the body of our email. However, in this instance, we wanna make sure that the uh, content is set to white, okay? So we're gonna use white. And then um, on the body, the background, okay, we're gonna make sure that this is set to that same purple color that the, the header is, okay? So it's kinda of gonna give us an optical illusion that these are one uniform component when we preview this, okay? And we also wanna make sure we just add a little bit of padding here. So I'm just gonna increase the padding on that wrapper and set that to 20. Okay, uh, we're gonna add in our header. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna center that. Okay, cool. So next below this, we're gonna set a, another wrapper stack. This time we're gonna keep the default colors that are defined inside the style stack, okay? Which is a light gray background and a white body color. So now inside here, I wanna encapsulate all of my content inside of a one column, um, which is gonna basically add a little bit of gutter around the entire content area. Okay, and let's go ahead and add, we had an image. I already had this image warehouse, so I'm gonna go ahead and click warehouse image, paste in my URL, okay, and let's set up my dimensions. I'm gonna do 600 by 200 is what this image is set to. And then below that, we had a header. I'm gonna just keep that as the default H3. Actually, Further up uh, on header on this wrap, one in the wrapper, I forgot I wanted to make that our H1, okay? So if you notice our H1 style has a little bit of different styling than our H3s, okay? So something I forgot to do earlier is setting that to be an H1. We're good with this H3. Below that, we wanna have a little bit of text. And then below that, we had a button. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. And the button was a little bit different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this button, to, we're gonna say, uh, click this button. Uh, we wanted it to be centered. And if you notice, it was a hollow button. So let's go ahead and click hollow button. And what that does is it gives us a nice kind of transparent button, kind of a modern looking button, okay? And uh, yeah, I think that looks good. And then below that, we had a call out. So let's go ahead and add a call out below that. Go ahead and let's grab the call out, okay? 
And if you notice the default color for call it was blue, um, I kind of wanted it a little bit less in your face. So I'm gonna set it to be primary and we're gonna add some text inside of there as well, okay? Let's go ahead and preview this so we can kind of see how things are going. So you see things are looking pretty good, okay? We have our uh, header up top. If you notice it's hugging the top a little bit, we, we can fix that. Um, then we have our getting started and then our image below that. And then we have our content, which is kind of a little tight. Maybe we wanna add a little bit of spacing uh, between our various uh, components here. So let's tweak some of the spacing uh, that we need in this email. So at the top, we needed a little bit of spacing here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some custom spacing. And what, what actually I want, I want it to be even at the top and the bottom. So I think 16 pixels at the top and 16 pixels at the bottom is gonna be just right. Okay, now further below, okay, we have, we wanted some more spacing between maybe the image and this header, okay? Um, so the easiest way to do that is with the spacer stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag in that spacer stack out there. And I think 25 pixels is probably a good amount, okay? And let's go ahead and option drag the spacer. And we're gonna add the same pixel padding above and below this button, okay? So let's preview this again. And I think that is really looking great. I think this uh, really gives us enough spacing that we're looking for um, in our email. So if you, if you remember a little bit further down below this wrapper, we had some links to our social media. So let's go ahead and add that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a one column below our wrapper. And then inside that column, I'm gonna go ahead and add a link list. And inside the link item, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that to be a warehouse image. And um, my pixels width is 25 by 25. And I added my image URL and I add the link where I want this to particularly link to. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and added uh, all four of these, just linking to different images. You would go ahead and change the URLs to where you want those linked to, obviously, okay? Um, now we wanted to have a little bit of footer below this, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a space on below this, okay? And then we have uh, some text that we wanna add below that. And here is where we would add in our copyright information. And we wanted that centered. Uh, maybe we wanna have it custom sizing and maybe shrink that down a little bit so it's a little bit smaller than our default content. So there we have it. We have our custom footer information down here with our link to social media and a little copyright string that's centered down at the bottom below the wrapper of our email. Now I breezed through that really quickly. So hopefully you can go back and look at how that email is built inside the demo project because you did get that project, you have that email. Now I do suggest that you go ahead and try to recreate it on your own. As you know, it's really simple. If you've ever used any of my other products such as my Foundation for Websites product, you'll really grasp this quickly on how you can build and lay out your emails, okay? So I hope this provided a great jump start for you to start using the email stacks now. And please make sure you check out our other videos. Um, if you're new to RapidWeaver, make sure you check out our new to RapidWeaver and Stacks videos. Um, if you want more in-depth tutorials on each of the settings in the Stacks, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. And also make sure that you join our user community at Weaver Space. This is a great community of users that is really anxious to help each other out so we can build better emails and improve everybody. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching this video. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.